Morris and welcome to Edge CGI. In the fourth video I want to introduce to you four new techniques that we can use to create even more detailed and complex hard surface sculpting in ZBrush. The first technique is a relatively simple one. What you simply do is you hold control to activate your masking tool and here I make sure that masking mask pen is activated. You can go ahead and decrease the focal shift and increase the intensity to have a, a sharper mask. And basically what you do is I can turn on perspective, turn off the floor, and I just hold control and I make a mask. And I can also hold control alt to delete certain parts. So basically I go ahead and I make a panel shaped like this. If you hold control and click you will soften the mask. If you hold control and alt and click on here you will make the mask a lot sharper. And then you simply go here under Subtool, under Extract, and here you have your Extract option. So basically if you press Extract it will show you a preview of what the extraction will look like. However, it will not be confirmed. If you rotate your object the extraction will be gone. So basically it's just a quick preview and I can uh, increase the thickness from 0.02 to let's say 0.05 click on extract preview it maybe increase it some more maybe maybe 0.1 I can also increase the smoothness so the default is 5 if I say increase it to 50 it will be a lot smoother here so I can once I'm ready once I'm happy with this I can go ahead and click on accept and now a new subtool will be created. It will take that masked area and extract it. So if I click on this eye here, I will isolate this. The mask will still remain. So if you want to get rid of the mask, hold control and just make an empty selection. And I can now go to my second subtool and also clear the selection. So if I press N, I can switch between which subtool is active, which one I can actually sculpt on. So that's the first technique, extract. Second technique, and by the way, your new extraction will not have symmetry active. So if you wish to activate, you can go ahead and press X. And now symmetry will be active and you can begin working on this one as well. So the second tool I want to show you is hold control shift. And this activates your uh, rectangle selection mode. You can use this to isolate certain parts of your mesh. However, if you hold control shift and click on this, you will have access to these trim brushes and these are useful for trimming and slicing off certain parts of your mesh. So if I go under Trim Curve for example, the shadowed area, everything will be sliced off that's on the side of the shadow. So everything that's on the left side here will be sliced off. So as you can see this is great for getting really sharp edges. And if you want to have the same result on the right side, what you can do is go on under here under geometry, go to modify topology, and then click on mirror and weld, and watch what happens. So it mirrors everything on the left side to the right side and welds it together. So this is a great way to get really sharp results. And it's pretty good for hard surface shapes in ZBrush. And so one more thing is that the extraction tool is not limited to simply getting panel. You can also extract something, set the thickness to something much higher, except, and then you can go under Dynamesh for example, activate Dynamesh, and you now have a new piece that you can begin moving around and getting all sorts of new results with. So this is a great way of getting even more pieces and you just keep dynameshing and, and editing until you get a new piece. So those are the first two tools. 
The next thing I want to show you is how you can create your own IMM brush, Insert Multimesh. This is an object I modeled in an external program, 3ds Max, and I went ahead and exported it and then imported it into ZBrush. And I want to use this to create my own Insert Multimesh brush. And what you simply do is you go, you press B, and then right here where it says Create Insert Mesh, you simply click on it. And then you say you want to either append it or create a new one, I'll go ahead and click on New. So I now have a new brush and it appears right here on the bottom. And then if you want to actually save it, just click on Save As and you can give your new brush a name. So with this new brush selected, let's say I'll go ahead and append a sphere. And I'll test out my new brush on this sphere. I'll simply click and you can see right now the orientation is a little bit off. I actually want this cylinder to emerge from the sphere. So what I'll do is I'll go back to this. I'll go ahead and delete this sphere for now. And I want to change my orientation. So what I'll do is I'll turn off perspective. I want to change my orientation so that I'm looking at the top of this object straight on. And now I'm going to go ahead and press B and insert multi mesh, ins uh, create insert mesh one more time. And then when I've got the new brush selected, if I go ahead and tr uh, test it out one more time, you can see now it has the correct orientation. And with this, I can quickly create a bunch of nice hard surface objects in ZBrush. So you notice that one problem here is that it's sticking out a little bit too much. I actually want this to be inside of the mesh. So what I'll do, go under Brush, and then go under depth and right now the embed is at 100 let's go ahead and change it to something like negative 46 and now you can see it's actually inside of the mesh maybe a little bit too much let's go ahead and change it to let's say 0 and now it's at this depth so you can easily change how deep it will be and let's say if this sphere and so right now, it masks off the areas that you're not working on right now. So it automatically creates a mask. So what I'll do is I hold Control, get rid of the mask. And now what I'll do is I'll go under Split, spl Group Split. And now all these objects are now part of their own group. So I can now sculpt the sphere independently and create some organic details like that these that the cylinder is kind of emerging from an organic creature here is a claw and the tooth that I exported into ZBrush right now it's one object I can also go into split and group split click on it and now it's two objects so I want to go ahead and make sure that I set the right orientation so I'll go ahead and rotate the objects to rotate this way, hold shift and then click and you can rotate in this direction your objects. And now I'll do the same thing. I can go ahead and hold shift to make sure that I uh, orientate directly towards the object. I'll go ahead and press B. And now I have a new option available called in Create Insert Multi Mesh. And this will take all the sub tools and put them all into one new Insert Multi Mesh brush. and now I have a new brush and so to switch between your subtools you can press N to switch between uh, insert multi mesh meshes you can go ahead and press M and now you can see I have two a claw and a tooth so if I go ahead and append a sphere I can go ahead and test them out first I'll go ahead and press M and select if I want to use this one or this one and the names here are the same names that the objects used to have so if I wanted to be more detailed I could rename this to claw and this one to tooth and as you can see this is a very easy way to create claws and quickly put them on our dinosaurs and I can go ahead and press M and now switch to now switch to the tooth and now I can quickly insert teeth on my T-Rex and give it different sizes here is another object I export into ZBrush 
and I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, first orient it correctly, then I'll go ahead and press B, uh, create insert mesh, and so I'm going to do something a little bit different for this one. So if I go ahead and do this, you can see it starts appearing. But I what I want to do is create like a tube, a tube of these things. So what I'll do is first of all, I'll click on this divider here on the left to open this up. And I'll go under stroke and I'll find this little icon right here and then drag it and put it right here. And this way I can select and change options here faster than having to go here every time. And I'll go under curve and I'll activate curve mode. And now, when I go and create a curve on my object, that mesh will be duplicated along the curve. So right now, it's a little bit too far apart. I'm going to go ahead and set the curve step here to something like 0.7. And now it will take that mesh that I imported and duplicate it along the curve. So this is a great way of getting some complex curves and tubes throughout your model. And ZBrush also comes with some good default ones. So if you press B and then press I, these are your ins uh, IMM insert multi mesh brushes and ZBrush comes with some nice ones like uh, insert cylinder. So here you can insert cylinders into your cybernetic dinosaurs and everything else that needs tubes. And here are some mechanical parts that are created specifically for making this cybernetic T-Rex. And you can see right now they're all scrunched together. So I'll go ahead under split, group split. And now here are all the parts. I can press N to switch between them. But I want to go ahead and of course make these all into and insert multi mesh brush. So I'll go ahead and press B. Create insert multi mesh. And now I have a new brush. And when I press M, I can activate all the things that are inside of it. So I can use all of these parts when creating my mechanical dino. For example, this one right here is for the claws, the claws on his foot. And these are various types of plates and little types of details that we can add to a dinosaur or to any mechanical object. And I'm going to be using these to add some nice hard surface objects to my dinosaur. So when you're getting ready to insert mechanical parts, it's a good idea to mask various parts of your creature and apply, give them separate polygroups. Polygroups in ZBrush are a great way of grouping and um, isolating different parts of your geometry of your sculpt. You can just hold control shift and click on a polygroup to isolate it. And you can differentiate between different parts of your mesh like the head, the legs, the arms. Here I'm using the insert multi mesh brush that I just showed you. And I'm inserting those claws into the bottom. And I think that using IMM is the fastest and easiest way to insert these types of features into your scope, like claws, teeth, feathers, and other types of numerous small details like that. And so when you insert it, the area, the mesh that you're inserting is unmasked and everything else becomes masked. And this is a great way to use, this allows you to use the transpose tool to quickly move, rotate, and scale your newly inserted mesh. And then after you've inserted, you can go back to your original mesh and move the holes in the arms and feet to better hold the claws. And here I'm inserting teeth. So the, the number of teeth that are inserted here is not scientifically accurate. Um, I read that a T-Rex has about 60 teeth, 30 on the bottom and 30 on the top. So you will need, if you want to be accurate, you will need 15 on the left for the top jaw and 15 on the right and the same for the bottom jaw. So the number of teeth that I'm inserting here is not accurate. So you want to go ahead and one thing you should know is that the teeth on animals, especially on Tyrannosaurus rex, they differ in terms of their position. So the teeth in the front are actually a lot smaller 
they have a D-shape and they are made to withstand lots of force so they don't snap off when the jaws go over a prey whereas the teeth on the sides are much larger and more banana shaped and so here I've got all the areas uh, different poly groups assigned to each area so I can quickly hide and isolate various areas and now I'm getting ready to insert some mechanical pieces into this leg. So I'm going to have give him also a cybernetic right leg, just like I gave him a cybernetic right arm, except I'll be using some new tools, the tools that I just introduced to you, to do this, as well as some old ones. But here I am, here is my brush, and I've got a lot of different meshes to choose from. Here I'm inserting a joint into his knee and then of course using the transpose tool to position it and you might you'll find yourself using the transpose tool a lot to position rotate and scale various tools here and of course I could have spent more time creating different shapes so it's a, it's a good idea to have knowledge of a polygonal modeling program a program that uses polygons because there's a lot of shapes and geometry that's a lot easier to model with polygons as opposed to sculpting it. So if I spent more time creating various shapes I could have had like a library of dozens and hundreds of insert multi meshes to choose from. And as you can see I'm just inserting various things in positioning and this is a process known as kit bashing. And this is a process that's used by people who worked with um, figures like action figures and all sorts of different toys and kid bashing is when you take pieces from various figures and combine them onto other figures to get new and interesting results. So we can do that in ZBrush. We can insert lots of different shapes and and configure them in various ways to and to get instant feedback on our design. So if we like something, we can keep it. If we don't like it, we can just delete it and try something else and here I'm masking away the the calf, the center part and here is, I'm choosing a claw I've got several claws so when you're inserting it you can hold shift to constrain it to 90 degrees just as when you're rotating your camera around you can press shift to snap your, your camera, to snap your object you can also hold shift to snap your rotations when you're using the transpose tool. So kit bashing is a great way of getting lots of geometry together very quickly and that provides instant feedback for you. So you can know exactly if you like the direction your sculpt your design is going or if you don't like the direction you want to try something else. So the ZBrush is not a program for final animation. It's a program for quickly concepting different geometry, different scope together, for quickly having lots of iterations of a concept and choosing one or more from that. So it will be kind of sloppy in various areas, but that's to be expected. It's not the program that you go to to get your final animation rendering done. It's the concept and design program where you can quickly throw together lots of different objects, quickly kit bash them together and start designing your creature, your mechanical apparatus and then you will go into a different program to fine tune everything and get all the pivots and get all the rigging and animation into place. So that's why you should not be too worried about accuracy and precision. You just want to get a lot of shapes in there and start experimenting with them. It's more right now this is the more of the experimentation phase where you're just working with the shapes and positioning them and rotating and scaling them to get in various ways to get a design that you like. And of course you can always go back and use the classic brushes here I am using the insert multi mesh brush that comes with ZBrush and this one has a curve on it so you can create these kinds of pipes and tubes and you can of course go to brush and depth to set how far it will be embedded if you go under stroke and then curves you can 
Turn off the snap function. Whenever you use a curve brush, it will be snapped to the surface of your sculpt. If you turn off the snap function, you can actually pull it inside of the surface. And here I'm just sculpting around the piping. If you want to create this kind of cybernetic effect that you see in lots of illustrations and sculpts, mm -hmm. it's like that. It's like the piping tube is inside the creature's flesh, and it's providing various functions for the cybernetic creature. It could be transporting some sort of liquid, some kind of blood, oil, or some kind of energy source. Here I'm just using the masking feature and then extracting it. And once I've extracted it, I can go and use the H polish to polish up various areas to get rid of the, the more organic features, to sculpt, to polish away the all the wrinkles and scales and organic parts, make it more mechanical. Here I'm using the clipping brush, trim brush, and on the bottom right there you have your transparency button. You can press that to make your other objects transparent for easier positioning. And here I'm using the layer brush with the drag rectangle stroke type to insert these kinds of holes here. And then switch to my uh, newly created insert multi mesh and inserting these types of details in there. So you can easily create and insert these types of details. Here I'm um, rotating the piston the hydraulic piston to make it a little bit more logical and that piston is used to rotate the foot. Here I'm inserting this type of object. I created this object, I, I took a sphere, I cut it in half and then I extruded it downwards and I created this kind of shape. It's got lots of useful applications for it. Once I positioned it and scaled it, I can use the trim brush to trim away the parts I don't need. The trim brush is very handy for quickly cutting away parts that you don't want. Here I've created a duplicate of this dinosaur's leg and I'm deleting the parts I don't want and I'm using the inflate brush to inflate it and move it around a lot and then once I've positioned it I can then use the trim brush to trim away the areas I don't want. Move it around a little bit more and now I can get some nice sharp hard surface shapes. However you don't need to always duplicate it. You can always append a sphere for example, position it, give yourself some room, and then use the trim brush again to trim away the areas that you want to remove. And remember that the trim brush does have its limitations, so sometimes it gives you results that are not what you want. So just keep in mind that all your tools, they, they are powerful, but they should also be used correctly to get the best results, the best possible results. Every tool, every technique has a best practice, which basically is the best way of using it, getting the most out of it and keeping its limitations to a minimum. So I'm inserting lots of different panels. and. I'm I can, I can remove these at any time if I don't like them or if I have a better idea. But they're basically just, these panels can serve as protection for example to keep the leg safe from various weapons and attacks. Here I'm inserting some more tubes. Tubes are a great way to add additional thickness to your geometry, to your sculpt. Make it more intimidating. Make it seem perhaps more grotesque as this creature, organic creature, is half organic, half synthetic and it's got lots of tubes in place of blood vessels for example, just pumping lots of blood and oil and, and energy and other types of liquids throughout the body. And then you can remove here, I am adding like a, uh, a mechanical spine, I guess it's a replacement or it's used to reinforce the creature's natural spine. And here I'm inserting these types of cylindrical details as I showed you previously, uh, editing the depth value so it can go a little bit deeper in there. And these can serve as like fusion reactors to power the, the dinosaur for example. They can have lots of different uses, it's all up to your imagination. Here I'm just going back here and adding more of these types of nuts and bolts details. 
so once you've made the holes you can always go back and add different types of details in there and here I also want to show you how you can insert a tube in here just go ahead and create that using the insert multi mesh curve function and then turn off the snap function and you can actually have it go inside the surface normals thank you for watching edge cgi don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with future videos mm -hmm.